Good day, brothers and sisters in Christ of FCC, friends and uh, family members. Once again, welcome to this channel of uh, sharing the devotions for the, for the week. And this week, I was reading from the book of Psalms, and uh, Psalm 27 verse 4 came to mind and entitled it, Growing Closer to God. And that is David's one desire. Uh, so we are at this point of time that we are a lot spending a lot of time at home because of the lockdown. But this is an opportunity for us to really grow closer to God. So let's read what the psalmist has to say. He says here, um, One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. This is a, a, a verse that we are all very familiar with about the one great desire of David. You know, if we were to ask David, David, what is your one wish? This is what he has expressed. One thing have I asked of the Lord. Now, as I read this verse again, uh, let us be reminded of this desire that we can also have just as King David had. So let me just break this uh, sharing into two parts. First of all, the one desire of David. He says only one thing. One thing I ask of the Lord, that will I seek after. That really governs his whole life pursuit. He says there are so many things he has done and he, he, he is doing, but he said all the things I do is probably needed. Just like us, we have many things that we need to do. We need to work to provide for our family. We need to take care of our children. We need to love our wife. Yes, these are all good things. Uh, but he says, but the one desire that I have in my heart, is to, is that is is to, uh, and, that he, and that is the one thing that he asks of the Lord. That is the one thing that he pursued. That one thing that determines everything in his life. And if he had, if he has this one thing, everything will fall into place. So, what is this one thing? What is this one desire of David? And that is expressed in the following uh, phrases in the same verse, and I call it the. Three determinations. In this desire, we see the determination of David. He says, that will I ask, but that will I seek after as well. So I'm determined to get it. And there are three expressions to this. So what are they? He says, number one, that I may dwell in the house of mm -hmm. the Lord all the days of my life. No, that is about being in the presence of God. That is about enjoying the favor of God. That is to be secured, to know that He is in the hands, in the, in the good hands of God. That should be our determination, isn't it? To be in God's presence. Yes, God has promised to be with us. But are we determined to be in the presence of God? That makes a difference, isn't it? Yes, God's presence will not leave us. His promise will always hold true. No matter what we go through, God will be with us. No matter what trial we may face, difficult and uh, incomprehensible as it may be, God said, I have promised to be with you, never to leave you. But the determination on our part is that, do we want to be in the presence of God? No, many times we want to be in the presence of other things. We want to be in the presence of work. We want to be in the presence of anxiety. We want to be in the presence of our wisdom. No, we want to be in the presence of many things. What about the presence of God? In other words, to just acknowledge that God is sovereign in my life. That God is the Lord of your life because he has redeemed you. He's loved you so much that he has come into this world to save you so that he can care for you the rest of your life. And that's what his promise is all about. But my determination, am I willing to be in the presence of God? No, to be in the house of God all the days of my life. You talk about the house is the presence of God. That is his first determination. And then he talks about, you know, so that I can behold your beauty. What is it about? What, what, what about beholding the beauty? I think it is to be in constant praise to God. No, that is, that is to look into the beauty of God. We look into many things in life today. Yes, many things. We pursue after many things in life. So much so we forgot that God holds the ultimate beauty of which our eyes must behold. And when we behold the beauty of God, we will raise, we will rise up in praise. Once we take off that focus, 
we will worry ourselves to death and we became complaining. We have a lot of questions. But when we see the beauty of God, we will learn to praise God. You know, the difference is this determination is this. Many times we have to look at ourselves. We look at how capable we think we are. We look at how righteous and good we are. We look at, you know, uh, how much achievement we have made in life. We look at all those things and we look at the mirror and we say mirror, mirror on the wall. Am I not the fairest of them all? And when we learn, when we do that so often, a day of disappointment will come because we know our wisdom will fade when our memory fades. Our beauty will fade when we start growing older. Our strength will fade as we grow weaker. But when we learn to look at the beauty of God, then our life is being sustained and we give praise to God, isn't it? Uh, look at the beauty of God, the beauty of God's grace. That I live day by day purely by the grace of God. I am what I am, Paul says, because of the grace of God. If not for the grace of God, where would I be? That is looking into beauty of his grace. Looking to the beauty of God's faithfulness, how he has provided for me till today. You know, honestly, in my 40 over years of serving God, I know no lack. Yes, there were difficult, struggling times, but I never have to worry because I know my meal will be there on the table. No matter what, God will always be faithful to care for his children. Yes, I may not be luxurious, but I have enough. And today, I think the Lord has blessed me with some kind of luxuries as well. So that is the beauty of God, the beauty of God's mm -hmm. promises. You know, God has never broken one single promise. While I think that many things are not under control, God is just permitting it for the season to achieve his greater purpose because ultimately God is still in control. And that is the difference, isn't it? So we learn, as we look, learn to look at the beauty of God, we will be strengthened, just like what Paul says, you know, even though our outer man is wasting away, our inner man is renewed day by day when we see the beauty of God. That is the praise of God. And lastly, the purposes of God, that I may inquire in his temple or to ask questions in his temple or to seek the ways of God and not my way. That is another great determination because so many times we want an answer. So many times we want to look into mm -hmm. our way. So many times the world has teaches us to do it your way. But have we considered the ways of God, which is a better way? For God says, my way are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Yeah, true, isn't it? Who are we to argue that fact? That God knows all and I don't know any, I don't know everything. God knows all. So am I willing to pursue the purposes of God in my life? Sometimes it may be difficult, but the willingness to say, yes, Lord, I will follow in your ways. I will inquire in your temple. I will ask questions, Lord, where am I going? Lord, what am I to do? Lord, who am I to love? Lord, who can I share the good news with? That is called inquiring in the temple of God to walk in the ways of God. So let us grow closer to God. While we all are conf all of us are confined to the home and we, say, and we know that it is going to drag at least until end of this year. No, today we hit another higher score, 19,000 plus. And we are, not, we are not very far from reaching 20,000. But the point is this, in all these things that we see, do we lift our eyes and our heads to God? Because God holds it all. Let us learn from David. One desire, three determinations. One thing that determines everything. May God bless you. May we draw closer to God. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, O Lord, to your servant, David, who wrote these beauty word, beautiful words that expresses the desire mm -hmm. of his heart. And we pray, O Lord, that may we also adopt this same desire to, O Lord, be in your presence, to praise you for the beauty that we enjoy in you and to walk in the purposes of your will. Lord, we thank you. Bless, O Lord all those who are listening in, that they may be strengthened and comforted in your words. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May God bless you.